nature is made possible by public television stations, your gas company, and America's gas industry, developing new sources of gas energy and ways to use gas more efficiently for more than 160 million people across America. I'm George Page for Nature. Of all the big cats, the one least often seen on film is the leopard. A shy, nocturnal animal, rarely out during the daylight hours, it's hard for cameramen to capture it. This week, we have what we believe is a first, a major film on the leopard. And it's been shot by one of the world's finest wildlife cinematographers, Hugh Miles. If you're a regular viewer of nature, you're bound to know Hugh's work. The Flight of the Condor, Osprey, On the Tracks of the Wild Otter, and most recently, Kingdom of the Ice Bear. Now he's both producer and cameraman for this very special film, set in Kenya's Maasai Mara Reserve. Hugh first spotted the star of our show when he was there in 1981. Returning more than four years later, and against all odds, he found her again, this time with a family of three cubs. As luck would have it, intense competition from lions and hyenas had forced her to begin hunting during the day. So here was a unique opportunity to capture behavior never before filmed. The last 15 minutes of this film are very unusual. Most nature programs are put together over a period of months or even years. However, the startling events at the close of this film took place on one afternoon, exactly as you'll see them. This is a very personal film by Hugh Miles, so we'll let him tell the story of how he filmed his leopard, A Darkness in the Grass. We've been to Africa many times before, but seen leopards on only one or two occasions. But at dawn each day, the sense of anticipation is as great as ever. Finding the leopard is not going to be easy, for leopards are shy, elusive, and largely nocturnal. In fact, really difficult animals to see. But we found ourselves in a really favorable situation because the particular female we'd been told about was very tolerant of vehicles. This provided us with a chance to film, for the very first time, the day-to-day -day activities of an African leopard and her cubs. Our female's about seven years old, and her cubs were born in about June, early July, so they're now about six months old. She has three cubs. The larger ones are male, and the two... <laughs> the female's pretty much on her own because the, the male takes absolutely no part in rearing the cubs, and in fact, along with lions and hyenas, 
he might even try and kill them. So once the sun came up, she'd lead the cubs off back to the safety of the lair. This is right in the heart of her territory, in this absolutely classic leopard country, or grassland with acacia scrub, interspersed with these wooded hills and ridges. In this wood lay her lair. The cubs were born here, and leaving them secure in the dense cover, the female would go off hunting for hours at a time, even sometimes for a day or more. On one amusing occasion, the cubs became really mischievous and started trying to catch starlings and doves. Though they don't spend all that much time in trees, this climbing skill is extremely useful to them and sets the leopard apart from all other big cats. Even at an early age, the skill is highly developed. generally thought that leopards are only active at night and so we were very surprised when our female set off from the lair at about eight o'clock one morning. We hoped she'd be going out hunting for it's most unusual to be able to film this behaviour. She often proved really difficult to follow for the home range covered at least 20 square kilometres and she was very well camouflaged in the grass. Leopards hunt a wide range of animals, but it's the impala which she most favours, for they share the same habitat, the areas where bush and grassland meet. The marshall eagle is another powerful grassland predator, and one of the largest birds of prey in Africa capable of killing leopard cubs up to two months old. Male impala are seldom on the menu of female leopards for they're rather too large and the horns potentially dangerous. But female impala are often hunted and this one, not knowing that the leopard was hidden in the grass, was running straight towards it. As they were now surrounded by a whole pride, the leopards settled into their respective trees to sit out the siege. But one lioness seemed particularly determined. Now's the time when most leopard cubs are killed, for they lose their nerve and try to escape from the tree. It's not actually all that unusual for lions to kill leopards. 
but in this instance, the lioness did at least seem discouraged by the thorns. Losing their resolve, the pride wandered off and the female seemed to suggest that she'd seen it all before. She didn't risk calling the cubs down until nightfall and her judgment's been proved right many times before. The fact that she'd raised three cubs to this age was quite remarkable and when we saw her for the last time on March the 10th, all three cubs were still living with her. Ahead of them was the challenge of independence. We heard in August that the male cub had gone off on its own and the two female cubs were with their mother. All were still alive and if they grow up to be as successful and confiding as their mother, then we know we'll not be the last two people who will enjoy following a family of leopards in Africa. Nature is made possible by public television stations, your gas company and the gas industry, whose respect for nature and the environment is reflected in the underwriting of this series. America's gas industry provides 160 million people with natural gas energy all across the country.